Welcome back everyone. My today's lesson is about neonatal sepsis. Uh, my content of discussion includes definition of neonatal sepsis, magnitude of the problem, types of sepsis, risk factors, clinical diagnosis, laboratory diagnosis, antibiotic therapy, and other supportive therapies. Uh, neonatal sepsis refers to an infection involving the bloodstream in a newborn infant less than 28 days old, and it remains a leading cause of morbidity and mortality uh, among newborns especially in a middle and lower income countries. Uh, we define neonatal sepsis uh, based on uh, our clinical signs and symptoms and also based on the culture grows. And we say definite sepsis if there is a clinical syndrome of sepsis associated with a sepsis uh, along with a growth of bacteria from one or more sterile body sites. So we, uh, to say a definite neonatal sepsis, we should have to grow a bacteria from one or more sterile body sites. And we say probable sepsis if there is a clinical feature suggestive of sepsis with sterile cultures and usually with a supportive tests such as uh, inflammatory biomarker, CSF for urinalysis or chest x-ray. And we say possible sepsis uh, if, uh, if there is only clinical feature suggestive of sepsis or if there is a presence of risk factors for, for early onset sepsis but there is not supported by laboratory tests or culture. So uh, based on a, a clinical sign symptoms and also based on whether we grow a bacteria from one or more sterile body sites uh, and also uh, based on a CSF, urine analysis, uh, other uh, sepsis uh, workup, we classify neonatal sepsis into definite sepsis, probable sepsis and the possible sepsis. Uh, when we came to the magnitude of neonatal sepsis, uh, in one big study uh, which was done uh, in 194 countries, uh, it shows that uh, the overall cause of neonatal deaths, uh, in the overall cause of neonatal deaths, neonatal sepsis is responsible for around uh, 15%. So uh, it contributes to the uh, neonatal deaths in huge amount. And 35% of under 5 days occurs during neonatal period. Uh, overall, 3.5 uh, million deaths occur during neonatal period worldwide. And from this, more than half million deaths is due to uh, neonatal sepsis. So neonatal Sepsis remains the leading cause of neonatal uh, diseases uh, worldwide. Uh, when we came to the uh, types of neonatal sepsis, uh, we classify neonatal sepsis into early onset and late onset. Uh, early onset sepsis is generally caused by the transmission of pathogens from the female genital urinary system to the newborn or the fetus. And these pathogens can ascend uh, through the vagina, the cervix and the uterus, and it can also infect the amniotic fluid. Uh, neonates can also become infected in utero or during delivery as they pass through the uh, vaginal canal and the typically bacterial pathogens for early onset neonatal sepsis include uh, group B streptococcus, E. coli, uh, coagulus negative stuff uh, and also the uh, listeria monocytogens and the, uh, other uh, rare causes. And the maternal factors that increase the risk of neonatal sepsis include chorioamnonites, GBS colonization of the female genital tract, uh, delivery before such seven weeks and also prolonged rupture of membranes greater than 18 hours. Whereas late onset sepsis usually occurs via transmission of pathogens from the surrounding environment after delivery such as contact from LG care workers or caregivers. And the percentage of late onset sepsis may also be caused by a late manifestation of vertical transmitted infection. And infants uh, requiring intravascular catheter insertion or other invasive procedure uh, that disrupt the mucosa are also at risk for developing late onset sepsis. Uh, preterm neonates are at higher risk for sepsis or infections than term neonates, and the increased susceptibility for infection seen in preterm neonates is mainly due to uh, deficient immune system, mainly due to decreased IgG antibodies and incompetent or, uh, obscenization and the complement activation, and also uh, comprised innate immune system caused primarily by the immature uh, epithelial barrier. And, uh, the increased need for invasive devices such as vascular access, endotracheal intubation, feeding tubes, uh, urinary tract catheters, uh, they are all associated with uh, risk of having uh, se uh, sepsis in the preterm neonates. So, early onset sepsis is, uh, to uh, it occurs within the first 72 hours of birth and uh, most of the time it is transmitted from the mother to the newborn through the maternal genital tract and it, uh, most of the time early onset sepsis is associated with a fulminant course and the pneumonia is most common during early onset sepsis and uh, 5 to 50 percent of uh, sepsis associated mortality in the newborn period is uh, due to early onset sepsis whereas late onset sepsis is symptoms beyond uh, 72 hours of birth 
and uh, most of the time it is a uh, it is acquired from the environment but sometimes late onset uh, gbs infection can manifest up to 60 days so, and late onset sepsis associated with slower progression and the meningitis is more common in late onset sepsis than that of early onset sepsis whereas in early onset sepsis pneumonia is more common than others and 2 to 6 percent of mortality is due to late onset sepsis uh, when we came to risk factors for neonatal sepsis uh, there are uh, different risk factors and we can classify to maternal and neonatal from the maternal factors rupture of membrane more than 18 hours prolonged labor more, more than 24 hours multiple uh, vaginal examination more than three times or unclean um, vaginal examination and the chorioamnonites uh, maternal antibiotics uh, greater than 48 hours within seven days of delivery and the meconium stained lacquer they are maternal risk factors for having early onset neonatal sepsis whereas uh, neonatal factor is prematurity as we have discussed above and also low birth weight uh, the need for resuscitation the need for respiratory support and also the need for IV fluid more than central line and also arterial line and out of hospital or out of healthy care facility borne is associated with a higher risk of having neonatal sepsis due to neonatal factors. Uh, when to define chorea uh, there is no single standard definition of chorea and the different center uses different uh, diagnostic criteria but the most commonly used criteria is uh, presence of otherwise unexplained maternal fever that means greater than or equal to uh, 38 degrees Celsius plus uh, at least two of the following additional clinical findings. Uh, uh, those are maternal tachycardia uh, greater than 100 beat per minute, fatal tachycardia greater than 160 beat per minute, uh, elevated maternal weight blood cell count, uh, that means WC count greater than 50,000 from the mother, uterine tenderness and foul smelling amniotic lighter, uh, amniotic uh, fluid. If you have two from those criteria and also the mother is having a fever greater than uh, 38 degrees Celsius, we can say the mother is having chorioamnonites and we should have to approach the neonate as infants of chorioamnonites mother. Uh, when we came to the clinical features of neonatal sepsis, uh, there are different clinical manifestations uh, and when we uh, categorize them to the organ specific or system specific, generally they are they are lethargic and some children might present with jaundice and they have temperature instability that means certain patients might have hypothermia and the others might have hyperthermia and on respiratory system respiratory distress after a period of normally uh, after a period of normal after a normal period and also apnea and also on GI system poor feeding vomiting abdominal distension bilious aspirates and also temperature liability can happen on the integumentary system, petechial rash, bleeding from the puncture site, uh, sign the symptoms of DIC, sclerema, uh, can happen. And in, on CNS, lethargy, irritability, seizure, uh, depressed uh, neonatal reflexes uh, can also be seen. And the, uh, metabolically, unexplained metabolic acidosis, hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, uh, they can all happen. And, uh, other symptoms might be seen based on the uh, individual child signed symptoms. Uh, when we came to the laboratory diagnosis for neonatal sepsis, uh, CBC and the CRP, most of the time, it is better if it is a quantitative C reactive protein. Uh, both of them should be done and they, they are called sepsis screen together. And C reactive protein, uh, overall, it performs better in late onset neonatal sepsis than early onset neonatal sepsis. And very poor. Uh, a positive predictive value in early onset sepsis and it, it has a modest positive uh, predictive value in late onset neonatal sepsis uh, on uh, one uh, large study and the serially negative crp uh, between 12 to 24 hours apart increases negative predictive value and negative crp and negative sepsis screen can be used to rule out sepsis whereas positive crp and the positive sepsis screen they are not as such specific for neonatal sepsis and poor ability, they have a poor ability to discriminate sepsis from no sepsis. So the negative predictive values uh, ranges from 60 to 95%, whereas the positive predictive values are very low. Yeah. Uh, C-reactive protein, uh, positive sepsis screen is not reliable for ruling in sepsis, but negative sepsis screen is uh, good to rule out neonatal sepsis. Uh, the other important investigation is blood culture and the blood culture should have to be done in all uh, in all who have a risk factor for neonatal sepsis 
such as uh, BAB of uh, Korea no as Bazar, BAB of Pro Mazar, and also if a child has signed the symptoms of sepsis, uh, blade culture should be sent. Uh, when we collect a blade culture, a uh, blade for a blade culture, for a neonate, especially for a premature babies, the minimum of one ml blade is needed, and we should have to use a pediatric blade culture bottle. Uh, we should not use an adult or uh, older age uh, blade culture bottle. We should have to use a, a small uh, blade culture bottle. And most gram-negative organisms grow within 24 hours in automated system, whereas most gram-positive organisms grow within 48 hours. And the cause of false negative uh, blade culture is one inadequate sample. Uh, the other is using adult blade culture bottle. Uh, another is superior antibiotic therapy and also uh, cold culture bottle. So we should have to use a minimum of one ml and we should have to use pediatric bottle culture and we should have to check the growth of bacteria every 24 to 48 hours. Uh, when we came to CSF analysis, uh, CSF culture is a gold standard, but it might be false negative because of uh, prior antibiotic therapy. For example, if the mother took uh, antibiotic during delivery, it might uh, make CSF uh, culture negative despite the presence of infection. So CSF culture is a gold standard to diagnose meningitis. It commonly used cutoff values is leukocyte count greater than 25 to 30 cells uh, per microliter, and the majority should be neutrophil, and glucose level less than 20 to 30 mg per dl, and the protein greater than 150 to 180 mg per dl. Those numbers are uh, for, it is different for preterm and uh, term. Uh, the, the big one is for preterm, and the, the smallest one is for term babies. So leukocyte uh, count on CSF greater than 25 is for 10 babies and the greater than 30 is for preterm babies. But the majority of the WS count should be uh, neutrophil. And none of the above have optimal sensitivity and specificity. And also in case of micro tra traumatic LP, uh, do not try to correct for RBC. Rather, it is better to use uh, CSF culture uh, than that of using a CSF protein and the uh, CSF uh, protein and the cell, cell count. Uh, rather, if it is traumatic LP, we should have to use uh, culture growth from CSF. And uh, urine analysis should be sent for late onset sepsis. Most of the time, uh, urine analysis is uh, urinary tract sites is not a focus on infection in early onset neonatal sepsis. Rather, it is a focus on infection in late onset neonatal sepsis. So, for all late onset neonatal sepsis with unknown uh, focus, always we should have to search for, we should have to send for urine culture and urine analysis. And the urine culture is a gold standard. Sample must be collected either by ultrasound guided suprapubic tap or by fresh sterile catheterization of the ureter. Uh, when we came to treatment of neonatal sepsis, uh, when we think of treating neonatal sepsis, achieving a treatment threshold for ileonset sepsis uh, is important because critical or critical ill symptomatic children should be treated. Uh, and asymptomatic and risk factors should be either observed or diagnostic testing should be sent and also uh, based on the type of risk factor and also based on the septum of child we should have to manage uh, a child uh, or a newborn who have a risk factor for any one uh, always we, we are standing uh, between over treating a child who would not have a sepsis and under treating a child who have a sepsis so always we should have to uh, search for infection and we should have to treat whether uh, based on whether treatment is needed or not because over treatment causes uh, dysbiosis it causes it kills intestinal microbiota so as much as possible we should have to prevent over treatment dysbiosis causes immune disease later in life such as atopy and asthma and also later in life uh, if a, a newborn is treated for more than five days uh, they are at risk of uh, intestinal disease such as IBD and the necrotizing enterocolitis and the like. And according to American Academy of Pediatrics, uh, we should have to approach uh, a baby of Korean Nunites mother. Uh, for first of all, we should have to define whether the mother is having Korean Nunites or not based on uh, a criteria that I, I have mentioned above. If a mother have a fever greater than 38 degrees Celsius plus two of uh, the four criteria such as maternal leukocytosis, uterine tenderness, uh, fetal uh, tachycardia, 
and also follow smelling amniotic fluid uh, we should have to diagnose chorea amniotic first and then if we confirm that the mother is having chorea amniotic uh, for all newborn uh, of uh, mom of chorea uh, amniotic mother we should have to send a uh, blood culture at birth and uh, sepsis screen at 6 to 12 hours that means blood culture should be sent for all baby of chorea amniotic mother at birth and CBC and CRP uh, quantitative should be sent at the age of 6 to 12 hours and then after sending blood culture and the sepsis screen we should have to start broad spectrum antibiotics then uh, our next management is based on a culture result if blood culture become positive we should have to do lumbar puncture and continue antibiotics uh, lumbar puncture is done to rule out uh, meningitis so uh, uh, we should have to send blood culture at birth and the septic uh, workup with CBC and the CRP at 6 and 12 hours of life. Then we start antibiotics and we continue our management based on a culture result. Uh, positive blood culture, should, we should have to continue antibiotics and do LDP. And if blood culture is negative and infant remains well and the laboratory data such as sepsis screen, CBC and the CRP become uh, abnormal. Yeah, we should have to continue antibiotic if a mother is received uh, if a mother received antibiotics during labor and delivery and if a blood culture is negative infant remains very well and the cbc is normal crp is normal we should have to discontinue antibiotics and the discharge at 48 hours so our next treatment is uh, based on a culture result and approach to a baby of a pro mother uh, if a mother have a rupture of membrane for more than 48 hours uh, we should have to send uh, WBC, CBC with differential and the CRP at 6 to 12 hours, like that of Korea Nonites, but no need of starting antibiotics if a baby is not symptomatic. If a baby is symptomatic, always consider as a baby is having a risk factor plus neonatal sepsis and send blood culture, CBC and CRP. If a baby is not, not symptomatic but having a, a prom mom, uh, we should have to send CBC and CRP at 6 to 12 hours and uh, we should have to follow the child at obstetric site and the no antibiotics is needed and they need only uh, work up with CBC and CRP at 8 hours, 6 to 12 hours and uh, vital sign monitoring and then our management is based on a lab result if the laboratory data are abnormal uh, we should have to send blood culture and start antibiotics if blood culture is negative, infant remains well and discharge, we should have to discharge by 48 hours. If laboratory data is normal, infant remains well and uh, we should have to discharge by 48 hours. Uh, so, uh, the main difference is for infants of chorea amniotic mother, we should have to send blood culture at birth, uh, CBC and the CRP or septic screen at uh, 6 to 8 hours of life and the start antibiotics. Whereas for prom mother, we send only CBC and the CRP or septic screen and we uh, follow the child. Otherwise, if the child is symptomatic, always start antibiotics uh, after sending CBC, CRP and blood culture by considering ill-onset sepsis. Uh, when we came to uh, the antibiotic sensitivity of the common etiology of uh, ill-onset sepsis, uh, the most common etiology of ill-onset neonatal sepsis is uh, E. coli, uh, GBS or group B streptococcus and Klebsiella, um, uh, Listeria, Monocytogens, and the like. So, according to one big study, one large study, most of the uh, group B streptococcus is sensitive for ampicillin, whereas most uh, E. coli species are sensitive for gentamicin or third generation cephalosporin. So, the combination of ampicillin and gentamicin will cover uh, the most common etiology for uh, leonset neonatal sepsis, that, that's mainly group B streptococcus and E. coli. So, the choice of empirical antibiotics must be based upon local data of etiological organisms and their uh, antibiograms. And the general principles are avoid surgery generation cephalosporin unless there is meningitis. Uh, if there is a meningitis, surgery generation cephalosporin have a good CSF penetrating uh, capability. We can use cephalosporin such as cefotaxin. Uh, otherwise, we should have to avoid cephalosporin. And we should have to combine antibiotics with a non synergism. Uh, the the non synergist microorganisms are uh, antibiotics are. Ampicillin and gentamicin or uh, ampicillin and cefotaxin. Uh, for units without access to local antibiotic data, like in our setup, we don't have uh, local antibiotic data. Uh, we don't know which species are uh, sensitive for what. And uh, we should have to start with uh, ampicillin 
workloads ampsilin inde gentamycin and if the child have some skin infection we can start with gloxacillin inde gentamycin and if the child have meningitis we should have to start ampsilin inde cefotaxim where most strains are likely to be resistant and uh, if a child is uh, not improving uh, after 24 to 48 hours we should have to check our culture result and we should have to proceed based on our culture uh, result otherwise if we do we don't have a culture if we don't uh, if a child is not improving we might have uh, we might proceed to a second line antibiotic such as uh, meropenem and the like uh, when we came to the duration of treatment of neonatal sepsis uh, suspected sepsis is uh, that means if for example if a, a, a baby of chorium neonates mother that's a suspected sepsis so we should have to stop antibiotics uh, if a culture is negative, if CUBC and the CRP or septic screen is negative and if the infant is doing well, we should have to discharge the baby and by discontinuing antibiotic after 48 hours. Uh, otherwise, culture negative probable sepsis is treated for 5 to 7 days. Culture positive sepsis with no meningitis 14 days. Uh, meningitis for 21 days, uh, especially gram negative meningitis. Ventriculitis for uh, 4 to 6 weeks, whereas bone and the joint infection is for 4 to 6 weeks. The other important thing in addition to antibiotic management in uh, treating a neonatal sepsis is supportive treatment. Uh, the supportive treatments are uh, airway ma management such as sanctioning the secretion, positioning the airway uh, and also if a child is in need of uh, oxygen we should have to give oxygen uh, based on the requirement you can also give CPAP and also we should have to maintain the circulation by either fluid boluses or inotropes if the child is in shock and also uh, we should have to uh, food and electrolyte management should be there and if the child is uh, anemic we should have to transfuse and if the child is have if the child have a seizure we should have to give anticonvulsant as required so supportive treatment is uh, very important thank you for your attention and this is all about uh, neonatal sepsis